Good day. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. Today I'd like to take a look at the L matching network. The L matching network is commonly used in auto tuners, and of the several auto tuners I have, they basically all work the same way. The L network's auto tuners that I have always use a series inductor and a shunt capacitor and they usually have a relay that connects to the capacitor to either the beginning or the end of the inductor. So for example it always has this series inductor and then it'll either have the capacitors through a relay connected here or the capacitor through the relay connected here. Now I show two capacitors, but while I'm doing this simulation, you'll see that one of them is always zero. Now, normally I would just go ahead and sweep these component values, but because I have to control which side has the capacitor, I'm going to use a daemon block. So here's my daemon block. Let me turn that off. Okay, so here's my daemon block. And at the start of my daemon blocks, I usually put the, the parameters that I'm going to be using in the order I'd like to use them. And I have two statements here, which essentially make sure that the run and up parameters always have a value of either 0 or a 1. And then I have an enable right here, which says, if I'm running, do the following. And in this case, if I'm running and if the up parameter is not zero, then I'm going to set the first capacitance, this one, to zero, and set the second capacitance to this value here. Otherwise, up must have been uh, zero, in which case I do the opposite. I set the first capacitor to be F and the second capacitor to be zero, and in all cases I set the inductance to be here. So I'm doing a little something a little different in that I am sweeping. My sweep variables are actually parameters to the daemon block. So sweeping happens by setting these parameters and then running the daemon block, which sets the capacitor values appropriately. Now let's turn this off for a moment. We're going to go ahead and do a turn this on, run. So now we're running, and we're going to show the sweep of F and H given up. Notice that I'm not modifying up. And I turn on sweep. And hopefully you've watched my previous video. What I'm plotting here is not, in fact, the impedance seen from G looking at L. It is, in fact the L dot inverse Z, and inverse Z is what load would need to be there in order for these elements to match to 50 ohms. So for example, here's a point. This is, if I right click on this, well, here's a point and it's saying, here's a load at 58.8 ohms to match it, it would have to have the, the capacitance set at 294.1 and the inductance set at 861.9. So let's go ahead and set our load. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this, which will set these values to what's listed here. So I'm going to right click on this. And you'll see that this capacitor was set to this value, the inductor was set to this value, and since we don't have up being scanned and up is zero, this one is set to zero. Now, we'd like to verify that this is giving us the right answer, and we can do that by turning on both, and you'll notice that here's our path, but the path isn't what we thought, it's starting here, and we really needed it to start over here to verify that everything was right. So we're going to go over here and set this load 
to 58.8. Down here, 58.8. And 58.8 and 54.2. And we'll see that, yes, lo and behold, we can see that if we start there with these component values, we get it to come back up to 50 ohms. Now, this is a little interesting right here. You'll notice this is a little hard to see right through here. And I'd like to make that more readable. One way I could make that more readable is I could change the color of what's being plotted in the background. There I set it to be green. It's still a little hard to see, partly because of the color of that sweep path is not a good color. But one thing I can do to fix that a little bit is I can change the alpha of this color, which is really like the transparency of the color. And now I set it to be a little more faded. And you can see that path line is starting to show up. So sometimes when you're plotting things, you need to change the color of the background so that you can see what it is you're really interested in. Now, you'll see here that these are a bunch of lines. It's a grid work. Let me set this back up. It's a grid work, and maybe you don't want to see it as a grid work. And you can change that, of course, by specifying a plotting type. In this case, I'm going to set it up to be dots. So you can change this so that dots come up. Now, it came up as grid because I was only doing two arguments, only sweeping two parameters. But it, this makes it consistent every time to always be dots. So now let's see what happens when I change this value to be a 1. Now, before I go there, I want to point out something. Here, if I right-click on this parameter, I get this menu. It's a format menu. And I have set this particular parameter to be linear, meaning it's up and down by this amount with each arrow. So I'm going to make it up and down by one. So now I can come over here and if I hit up arrow, it goes to one. And you'll notice that the area that's being matched by the L network has now flipped to the other side. And you notice now this is zero and this one's not. And if I say up again, you'll see that it comes back. And if you look, if you watched closely, you'll see this momentarily be a two, and then it gets set back to zero. And that's because this is running. So when this runs, it always makes sure that the result is zero or one. Now we did this earlier experiment where we said we could right click on this dot and that would tune these components to match the value necessary to reach that dot. And then we had to set the impedance of the load. Again, I'm, I'm just doing this to demonstrate what's going on. And then we saw that it tuned correctly. And if you're doing a lot of explanation, sorry, if you're doing a lot of exploration, this can be a really tedious process. And SimSmith, of course, can help you out with that. And here I'm going to do this. I'm going to say L.Ohms equals L dot inverse Z. Now, what's that do? That says, given these parameter values, L dot inverse Z says what the load has to be to match 50 ohms. And here I'm just going to set the load to be what it needs to be so that this load and these components always matches 50 ohms. And now if I click over here, the load gets set and, oops, doesn't work. Well, why doesn't this work? 
Well, notice that I clicked on this, but it didn't set the load properly. And why did it not do that? Well, it didn't do that because I didn't tell it what to do with J ohms. I said set ohms to be this, but I didn't tell it what to do with J ohms. So I'm going to do that. And now when I click on this, everything works as expected. I right click, it sets these values appropriate for that point. It computes the inverse Z given to those values and it assigns the load to be correct. So now I'm working with just one side of the L network where this capacitor is zero and I'm interested in playing with the other side and of course here I can just say one and now I'm working on the other side and if I want to work on both sides at the same time of course I'm just going to turn on this sweep of the up and down and now I have the whole chart working for me and it's possible that I would like to look with a little more precision in one of these areas where the dots are far apart. Of course, I can do that by saying, increasing the number of points it wants to plot, or I want it to plot. There we go. And I might be interested in seeing an even more complete list. And I can do that by setting this up, or in this case, I'm just going to tell it to do an extended sweep of 100 point, or 100,000 points by clicking on this button. Takes a little while. And there we have a more, a better coverage of the Smith chart. If I click on one of these, it's going to recompute everything because I'm going to change the values of this and that will mean it will do a new sweep and the new sweep won't be an extended sweep. It will be the fewer points again. It's also interesting to play a little bit with the type of plotting that's going on over here. You can see that the spacing of the dots gets different, but it's still the same number of points, whether you're plotting it linearly or logarithmically. So let's see, we got to see how to use a daemon block to, to set the values of the L network so that we don't in fact have a pi, we always just have an L because one of the capacitors is zero. We saw how we could get the daemon block to set the load impedance to match the components so that we could play with this and see how the path was being changed and how the topology of the network changed. And we saw how we could set the color here to be a little less overbearing so that we could concentrate on other signals going on. Hopefully that was a little, little lesson on L networks and how you might simulate them and a few of the tricks that you can use inside SimSmith to make your exploration a little more informative. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. Thanks for watching, and thanks for using SimSmith.